Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Salaam Britain. We hope you've enjoyed our morning so far, but we do have much more to come. So our next guest is S.N. Jalali, the author of the House of Ibn Kathir series. She recently published An Andalus Adventure, her debut publication in the young adult historical fiction genre, mm -hmm. continuing the spirit of adventure, love of Islam and Islamic knowledge through the eyes of very famous historical heroes. Yes, indeed. Her books are written for young adults, tweens and teens, aimed to expand their knowledge of Islam, introducing them to our rich history and heritage. Assalamu alaikum. A very, very, very warm welcome. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you for uh, having me. You know what? I'm, I'm holding your latest, <laughs> an Andalus adventure. Mm. I'm super excited about this. I mean, you know what? This this takes me back it does, to my it? childhood, yeah. uh, where you know I, I watch uh, I watched and I read a lot of adventure stuff, um, but nothing based on anything that had yeah. a kind of Islamic context to it. So this is why I'm feeling absolutely excited by this. Um, this is this is something that you know isn't something that's so often done. You're 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 kind of like stepping into uncharted territory. Um, with this, but you've you've already started the ball rolling with your first book as well. Um, what's it been like? What's your experience been like? Um, I mean, I know you're saying it's uncharted. Actually, I would, I think the thing with the bo a book like this, I'm sure they do exist in, say, for example, in the Arab world, Arabic mm. language, or even in Urdu. I'm sure there are books out there that chart many of our um, history in in the form of fiction, um, but. In the English language, yeah. that's where the issue is, and I think that's what makes me a little bit um, possibly unique, um, because although there are books within mainstream, um, many communities have written about this incredible period in um, history mm. where you had the, uh, the Muslims uh, coming from North Africa to, um, and this is how they would describe it, coming yeah. then to Spain, but every community has their version of events of what took place. So this, for me, is it, quite interesting because it's not coming from the European lens, but rather coming from the Muslim lens of what actually took place. Mm. So for me, I, I think that's what was so exciting about it. It's about it's such an amazing period of 8th century. Um, so much was happening in the Muslim world. And, and it's just actually just bringing that to light to English speakers mm. to have our voice, our own authentic voice on what took place at that time. So... Yeah, That's pretty, it so we, we've had a little look at it, haven't we? And uh, it's in, really interesting because, as you said, it's it's kind of a new thing. Although it's, I think we've seen in the Arab world, they, they have quite a few. But um, growing up in the UK, this is no, not this something is, that it's I different. No. It would be different. I mean, that, that for me, I mean, I, I, anything to do with my writing was always coming back to the fact that just from a personal point of view, you know, I'm a mother, I've got children. Yeah. And when I was raising my children, um, Especially when they started reading, it was this issue of okay, now this is this is something that it was so incredibly exciting. You know, when I was a child, I used yeah. to read prolifically as well, and and but there was slightly something different in the way that I was raising my kids to perhaps the previous generation. Mm -hmm. And when when I was raising them, I was also conscious of the fact that I needed to bring Islam into their lives, into and their I lives, had a yeah. bit more awareness about our history and our background and and things like that. So when I was out there looking for books for them to learn about Islam or even to just find characters that were Muslim at the time, it was, difficult. It was very difficult. So I think that's where I just basically this kind of this idea of kind of evolved. Mm. So, so tell us about this idea a little yeah. bit more in yeah. detail. So you've set this, um, yeah. this fiction yes. uh, in an Andalus, yes. uh, Muslim Spain, mm. yeah. um, which, you know, for many of us growing up, you know, we were always told little snippets and stories. Yeah. Yeah. And if we were lucky enough, we might have gone and visited Spain and visited <laughs> Alhambra. Um, but, you know, like what what drew you to that particular destination and that particular period of time? And, well, and how did you set that story? Well, funnily enough, it was my daughter. She brought um, homework, uh, and basically, she she came running up to me saying, "Oh, look, this says this this book mm. says um, Muslim Spain," and she's like, "When was Muslim?" You know, she was completely shocked at that. Yeah. So I remember exactly that. I had snippets of information, but I didn't have the full overview. So I just thought, you know, okay, I need to explain this to yeah. her. So I went back and I started reading, even just for my own interest, because I didn't have the full picture either. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the journey began. And it was just this incredible period, 8th century. I mean, it's quite early on if you think yeah. about it, because actually um, from, the, from the time that Islam spread out from Arabia, mm -hmm. 
um, they'd entered Sham, they had entered Al Maghrib, and by the time they reached Spain, this was only 79 years after the Prophet died. It was that early on. Mm -hmm. But it was an incredible, incredible um, impact to have on that region because this was the first time where, from what, what I was reading, um, for every, if I'm, this much people do know, medieval Europe was known as the Dark Ages. Mm. It, was, it was not a pleasant place to be living in. And um, there was lots of problems within communities. And um, so the arrival of, of the Muslims and then later on the impact, because then everybody's heard, it's funny, everyone knows the, the aftermath, which was mm. the Golden Age, where Andalus became such an amazing um, location where people virtually from Europe, all over everywhere, they used to go there. It became a conduit for learning. It was a center of so much exciting things happening in terms of tech, well, for their time, technology and innovation yeah. and learning. It was incredible that in that, that corner of Europe, this was happening. Mm -hmm. And so I know, and it's sad because generally when you look at historical books, that region is always referred to as the Dark Ages, as Dark Ages, but that, it wasn't the case. Well, you yeah. know, in, in the, that particular region, it was actually so amazing when you, when you look at that, and actually the book, um, it begins with the, it's not actually focusing on the aftermath so much, but it's the journey. It's the actual, um, the events that led to the actual birth of Muslim Spain. I think that's the bit that's possibly missing in people's minds. So tell me, how do you weave a, a fictional yeah. story uh, through a kind of historical, uh, true life mm, yeah. uh, setting? Very hard. Uh, it's it's a combination. I mean, even for that's me, some pressure. <clears throat> it is because I'll be honest with you. Even a few years back, if you'd asked me, that's why I never said anything to anyone. I was like, mm. because it was it was something that I wasn't sure that I would be able to do and uh, complete. It yeah. was because you're looking at all sorts of aspects. Because you're talking about eighth century. It's a different. You know, you had different civilizations at the time. You had. You had not just the, the, the Umayyads, the Muslims, you had the Romans at the time. There they were the Visigoths who were in, I know we're calling it Muslim Spain, but prior to it becoming Muslim Spain, that area was called uh, the Iberian um, uh, Peninsula, if you like. But um, So you had the Visigoth kingdom there. So you have to learn about the different civilizations. Who, and, and even, not just that, it's just like now, if you were to talk about contemporary, you would have to sometimes delve about the previous, like, um, civilization so even in that instance you would have to talk about who were the previous ones there Phoenicians because many civilizations led to the terrain of what that world was at that time so you would need to know not just the back background of all the um, people around but even something as simple as like what kind of clothes did they wear mm. what kind of food did they eat what was their local culture like for the different communities at the time what were the languages that they spoke what were it's what were really um Oh, it's really complicated. It's, so it's like, not bog standard Spanish. Um, I, you know, because it's the Romans and the Visigoths, mm, and yeah. it's. I mean, I don't look at it from specifically on that, but the point is that there were different, very different communities from the level of, in terms of who the peasants were in how they lived to, the the, the actual uh, ruling elite. So, so, so it's, it's more just... looking at their. It's more looking at their social. Because obviously, I, because you're writing in English, you don't mm. need to delve into the actual yeah, uh, yeah. the language as such. But still, as, as a writer, you have to look at everything and then det uh, determine what it is that you're going to focus on. Certainly, in terms of visuals, you need to reconstruct 8th century societies of different, different um, classes. And mm. you need to be able to know how they lived, what were their problems. So uh, much of the time was just building that... Mm that picture of that landscape and then being able to then put down a story. I mean, so without, term, sorry to cut you without yeah. giving too much away. What, what's your, what's your, is there, is there a main character? Is it lots of different characters? What? Yes, there are. I mean, yeah. it's, a, it's I mean, obviously you could come and imagine because I'm looking at three different communities here. Yeah. And um, so you will see the actual historical figures. Right. They will be there. Um, and then you will have... Who are, who are the historical figures? So the historical figures, for example, on the Muslim side would have been Musa ibn Nasser, um, Tariq ibn Ziyad, and oh. Tarif ibn Malik. And um, if you were to look at the, the Visigoths, so mm -hmm. in the, um, the, the king, for example, the famous king would be King Roderick. Right. And then you've got the, uh, the young princes, Prince Akila and um, Prince Omond. And 
uh, you've got Count Julian. So these I mean, are the actual... These are real historical, historical figures. Historical figures. Yes. And and I'm just trying to understand how we merge the kind of historical figures in yeah. with the fictional exactly. so, characters. So this is always the problem, because when you look at it from the historian, yeah. uh, historical books, which are the non-fiction books, yeah. the way that historians document it, they're not going to do a day-to-day -day diary of what yeah. happened going from the moment that they left North Africa to... They would put the key events, mm, the key events. So someone like myself who would then go writing the story, this is where it becomes complicated in a fiction because you cannot, in a, in a non-fiction, you can get away with just writing yeah. those key moments. But as a fiction writer <clears throat> who's telling a story, you've got to then put in middles, you know, right. like uh, fillers, if yeah. you like, between telling the story and the narrative. And this is where the research of how the societies lived and even, for example, um, you will see uh, the, the, the fictional characters. Those fictional characters are actually based upon the real life experiences of the people that were there at the time. So although, in principle, they're not real people, right. but what they were experiencing and everything that you read, they were things actually that were happening to the people at the time. Right. So many of the uh, fictional characters, and I think that's the, uh, the way that I've separated it, you'll yeah. be able to know who the historical figures are, okay. who the fictional characters are, so immediately you'll be able to determine which, but be also aware that the fictional characters are the real live experiences of what was right. happening to the people, the local communities, from the peasants to, um, I mean, mainly the, the fictional characters are from, the, they're the ones whose voices would not have been recorded. Yeah. Do you understand the main? So, so tell us about the protagonists. Um, oh gosh, there's so many of them, to be honest. I mean, the, the way that I'm writing the book, mm. you're seeing it actually from the eyes of many, the many. So you're hearing their voices yeah. mm. of what they, how, how they viewed what was taking place. It's really hard because I don't want to give spoilers away. Don't yeah, want to we give spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To give away. We're asking so many questions. I know. Like, I, know. Really, I, know. You know. I mean, I'm already getting like. Uh, Forgive me if, if, if you don't feel this, but I'm getting <laughs> Harry Potter vibes. Yeah, we did Through talk this. about that off camera, Not with didn't this we? particular book. Not I with this particular book. <laughs> it's, just, it's just the adventure aspect. Uh, it's, yeah. No, this is completely adventure. This is, I mean, we're talking about on the level of, like, I would say, like, if you had to compare it, I don't know, history, you know, because this is history, and I know right now the most popular genres at the moment are fantasy. Mm, so if you're looking at different. Hunger Games, that kind of thing, because yeah. we're talking about this is about societies, and the challenges yeah, the so people it's face it's more it's a slightly different you know but it's it's a different genre because like i said it's not fantasy it's the genre of historical fiction mm. so i was just going to ask you so it, what's it like like writing for children because obviously you have to take into account it's kind of older children tweens if you, if yeah, you want to call them and yeah. teens each has their own peculiarities mm. i think and i think that's what i personally for me um wanted to bring because I think especially for, for Muslims you know alhamdulillah there's lots and lots of books now mashallah yeah. for especially for younger readers but I still think possibly this is an area where they there's still some more um it'd be nice to see more come out mm. and specifically for this is I think what where I'm looking at is 10 years and above so anywhere in the high school region going up right and now actually even young adults I say young adults but even this is something that everyone knows young adults is something that actually even adults will go on to read as well so it's giving um, heroes, it's giving role models to a, a, a different generation of readers. And it's just carrying on from the wonderful foundation that's been laid down mm. by the, the younger years writers. So it's just something that's really important because I think reading is something that should be done through all the ages. You know, it's not something that should just be focused on younger years, but it's something that should carry through because ultimately, especially if, someone wanted to be a writer it's not something that you just have a phase but writing is something that it's really I do think is something is an ongoing before you can become a writer you have to be a reader and it's something that stays with you I mean mm. I know that's my I mean this is just obviously this is my personal experience of it I was a prolific reader it was never in my vision to become a writer but one thing I was was a dedicated reader mm. and um, and I think it was just it was a natural progression therefore for me to then start writing when when especially when my kids were growing up and I realized there was so little literature out mm. for them in terms of giving them positive Muslim role models, true. you yeah. know, an avenue for where they can learn about Islam and just kind of feel really good about themselves and not feel that, you know, they're constantly looking and reading stories from the eyes of other heroes who weren't quite like them, yeah. which isn't a bad thing because it's good to learn about other um, 
communities and societies and just understand how other people live their experience yeah. of life. But it's about having that authentic voice of your own, you know, to feel that you're not the only one out there. And actually, you know, there are people like me, you know, mm -hmm. so whether it's my uh, House of Women Kathir books or whether it's this book, you will see things that actually even, even though this is 8th century, look, they still mm -hmm. pray. They still yeah. fast. Yeah. They're doing much of the book is actually during the period of Ramadan because actually this was happening over Ramadan. Right. So it's really strange. Well, no, it's not strange. That's the wonderful thing, isn't it? It's the <laughs> fact that you could have so much in common with even <clears throat> someone back in the eighth yeah. century. Being a Muslim has not changed. Yes. How we live in terms of our practice of the deen and the way that we reviewed and loved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our relationship mm. with the Prophet, it's there whether, you know. Um, through the through the ages, it's 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 something that you will identify with mm. in the I same mean, way. I love that because it's yeah. you know there's a lot of influence outside of um, the Islamic influence, isn't there? And you know, like when you pick when a child will pick up a book or watch yeah. the television, there's a lot of other things that they're kind of drawn towards. So it's always <clears throat> always nice to have something that's kind of fictional, adventurous, but yes. also gives a lot of history, and yeah, a lot of inspiration them, exactly. as well. Exactly, and I think it's, history is really important. You know, every, every, you know, history has a lot you can learn from, and uh, histories have so much to say mm. about um, how people live, and, and, and I think it's really strange. It's, it doesn't matter how much or what time span. It's funny how our lives, when you look at it, it is no different, really. I mean, yeah. if you take... I know people view from the lens of technology, but actually, you know, the lived lives of people, it's very, it's not that different. It's right. not. And it, it's, and it's, I think that's the fascinating thing about history. And I think certainly from our perspective, it's, it's something that I think as a Muslim community, I think it's really important mm -hmm. to know um, this incredible heritage that we have. And, uh, and I just, I just feel for me, it was such a pleasure and mm -hmm. I was just uh, such a, amazing thing to even just to learn about it that to now be able to share that with everybody else um i mean for me that would be just you yeah. know well, yes. to share it is not uh something that you've just um st uh, well embarked on just with this uh this is the second follow-up uh you started off with the house of ibn kathir mm -hmm. um and that was about a boarding school story that blends islamic information mystery and compelling characters embarking on a new stage in their lives you know, you, your, your books are all about that familiarity mm. for Muslims, you yeah. know, talking about, you mentioned Ramadan, etc. Yeah, yeah. When you, once you've authored a book um, and you put it out there yes. in the public and, and you probably take this to, I don't know if you do this, but um, I know a lot of other authors talk about going to schools and, yes. and, and doing uh, readings, public readings. What yes. has the engagement been? No, it's been really good. Yeah. I mean, obviously, pandemic has been a big problem at the moment. But did you do any that, Zoom <laughs> readings? Um, I did. I did actually. I did <laughs> one, uh, which was really nice. That it was with a, a link up with Malaysia, um, oh, wow. as, and it was lovely seeing that. Uh, because to be honest, the book is available um, worldwide, well, so it was really yeah. nice to see Malaysian readers reading it Inshallah. and hearing their perspective. In fact, the House of Um Kathir has I got a Malaysian character in there, and the, it's got um, characters from all over the world. Um, because obviously Muslim, it's not, you know, you can have people, different races, it's not linked to anything, you know, so it's amazing the fact that you, you able to show that. So when you mm. go out into the community, and I have done uh, uh, readings at schools, and I, uh, and I did um, a reading in a bookshop as well, and it was really amazing to mm. see the children when they come out, and, and I can see, you know, the diverseness of our community, mashallah, and then when you see, uh, a child say, oh, I love, I love Warsamo, and he's Warsamo is from, he's one of the characters, and then he's from the Somali community, yeah. and then you have somebody else like uh, a revert who would immediately identify with a Daoud in the book, who's mm -hmm. a revert, who comes from a revert family, or then you have read there, for example, he he's Arab in origins, right. and um, so immediately the Arab kids, but it's not just that because I, I, it's not just as well as identifying possibly from where they come from in mm -hmm. terms of races, but that. The fact that they're all Muslim, that's the binding thing. So even you can have kids crossing over and say, even though they don't, but they still find the, the connection because their personalities are mm -hmm. in line. So you'll have kids, they'll say, yeah, yeah, I'm just like Warsama, I'm really studious. Or they'll have others who say, yeah, I'm a bit like Reda, I'm really ra laid back. Or yeah, they'll be yeah, like yeah. Yusuf, yeah, yeah, I really want to. Um, you know, he's like, Yusuf is really, he's a sweet boy. He's right, uh, he's, he's, he get, gets along with everyone. Whereas you have some characters who are not quite... Um, you know, they're very 
they have particular personalities, yeah. but that's the whole point when you write characters with different. Oh, you know. we, we just had a, a little clip of the, of the cover of the book on the oh, screen. Right. So the just, House of Ibn Kathir. Yeah. yeah. So it's 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 amazing in terms of the the way the children connect with mm -hmm. the um, with the characters, and I think that was the whole point of writing the book. Um, was to have that, the ability for a child to be able to connect and have positive role models. Yeah, so I mean, representation is very important, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. And I can, I really feel the excitement of this. <laughs> uh, it's palpable. Esen Jalali, thank you for coming in and introducing us to an Andalus adventure. Thank this you for fantastic. having me. <laughs> I feel like, you know, the future is very exciting now. <laughs> Thank you so and, much. And speaking of the future, just before we wrap up, I just wanted to ask if you've got any more plans for any other books. I do. Yes, I yeah. do. Yeah, inshallah. I'm not giving anything coming. away. I'm not giving anything <laughs> away, but oh, there's definitely others coming. <laughs> oh, as I said, it's very palpable, the excitement, and the future <laughs> seems endless, inshallah. inshallah. All right, well, Esan Jalali, thank you so much thank for coming you. into the studio and talking us through this exciting stuff. Thank you for me. Oh, that was amazing, wasn't it? Um, but we are going to go for another commercial break, but do stick with us and we'll see you back here after this.